Somebody just raise your hands in the heaven and say, God, you have my attention. Praise the Lord. Say it again, say, God, you have my attention. Say it again, say, God, you have my attention. Say, Holy Spirit, you have my attention. Jesus, you have my attention. You have my attention. The Bible says that there was a man in Caesarea called Cornelia, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man, one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed God all way. And the Bible says he saw a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming in to him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked up, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thine prayers and thine alms are come up to a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodgeth with a Simon Tanner, whose house is by the seaside, and shall tell thee what thou ost to do. And the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed. He called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited unto him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. And on the morrow, or in the morning, as they went on the journey, they drew nigh unto the city. And Peter went up to the house to pray about the sixth hour, became hungry and would have eaten but while they made ready he fell into a trance and saw heaven open and seven vessels descending on him and that it had been a great sheet knit at four corners and led down to the earth where in all manner of four-footed beasts of, it, of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air and there came a voice to the guy told him rise peter kill and eat but peter said not so my lord for i've never eaten anything that is common or unclean and the voice again spoke to the guy do the same he refused the third this was done thrice the 16 vices and the vessel was received up again into heaven now while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry of Simon's house and stood before the gate and called and asked whether Simon who was surnamed Peter was lodged there. And Peter thought, and while Peter thought to get down and go down, sorry, and Peter thought in the vision, and the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek you. Right? Arise therefore, get thee down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. And Peter went down to the house of Cornelius. Some of you know the story. And the Bible says that uh, when Peter came into the house of Cornelius, the Bible says Cornelius explained and he was saying as he was fasting four days ago until this hour in the ninth hour as he was praying in his house, behold, a man stood before him in bright clothes. He didn't even know who it was necessary. But then he mentioned to Peter. And then the scriptures tell us that uh, Peter continued to explain uh, the gospel. Praise the Lord. And the 45th verse says, while Peter yet spake, the Holy Ghost fell in all of them which had the word. and the they of circumcision which believed were astonished and as many as came to Peter because of them sorry and as many as came with Peter because that on the, on the gentile also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost for when they had them speak with tongues and magnify God they, they then answered Peter can any man forbid water that they should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we and he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord praise the Lord Jesus Christ praise the Lord Jesus Christ Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I just wanted to, to preach that sermon. That's why I told you, God, you have my attention. It's the heading, right? God, you have my attention. Now, look at the men of all. Let's begin from the beginning of the world and see how God met men so you'll understand and appreciate the ministry in Cornelius' life. Okay? The scriptures tell us of a guy called Abraham. The Bible says that we are all sons and daughters of who? Abraham. How did God meet Abraham? The Bible tells us that Abraham was worshipping the sun. And while he bowed down to his head and he was seeking the Almighty, uh, their, his God. right? And while he continued to seek after that particular God. One time this God makes up and he knows he needs the guy. right? What does the Bible say? The Bible says he comes to Abraham and tells him I have called you. Come, follow me. And the Bible says God told him to leave his own kinfolk without anything. And that he should go to a place where the God, God had showed him. Oh sorry, where God had appointed him to go and be. Or an inheritance. And the Bible says that our father Abraham went without knowing. Okay? He went without knowing. With a descendant inside him. Right? But when he reached Canaan, God tells the guy, this is what? Canaan. Hallelujah. 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 You go back to the scriptures and see how this God met our poor father. When Abraham gave birth to Isaac, Isaac was by default a worshipper of God. Why? Because he never had the other life of, of seeking after the son. The father had met God. You understand? When, when Jacob comes into the mix, all the children of Isaac 
however rebellious they were, they knew it, there existed a certain God. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? And the scriptures tell you that somehow by default, these guys, by the time they grow up to actually understand what is happening, they are worshipping God. They are seeking the face of God. You understand? The patriarchs knew God. They, by default, knew God. He is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You understand? So, Jacob begets who? Esau and who? And who? Sorry. Esau and Jacob. Jacob. So, who did Jacob beget? Joseph, thank you, the twelve, right? Plus Benjamin and the like. Sorry, forgive me, the name. Now, the scriptures tell us, even the kids of these guys also knew God. You understand? Somehow they were raised in a ministry that knew that our father knows God. Jacob, all the twelve tribes of Israel knew who? God. And these were the sons of who? Jacob. And that is how God multiplies all through the earth and ever and ever and, and people continue. Right? People continue. Now I could take you away later. Samuel. Okay? The Bible says that his mother dedicated him from birth. You understand? Told him he shall not drink of wine. Okay? And Samuel, the mother made a vow to God. He told, him, told God, if you give me a son, I shall give him to you. How do you know already the story of Hannah? The Bible says the boy after winning, eh, after winning, after giving the guy basic biscuits, the scriptures tell us instantly the lady fulfilled what she had promised to God. Okay? And the Bible tells us that Samuel ministered to the Lord under Eli. You understand? That means by, by any case, Samuel entered the system. They were high priests. The Eli's had already known God. That means these men were living in a time where somewhere, somehow, God was. They could have taken it for granted. They could have acted like nothing was happening, but there was a God. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? Samson was born in a system that knew God. Look at all them judges. They were born in a system that knew God. Somehow, if they didn't know, somebody related to them had introduced them to God. Their roots. The scriptures tell us that the lineage of the husband had already known a God. Now we knew a God. You understand, friend? We go to the Joshua, the Caleb. They knew God. Okay? They, just, they somehow knew God. Then Moses gets up in a place where he never knows God. Are you hearing me? And while he was standing, shit, somehow God appears to the guy. Okay? And then he's what? Why? Because he had a certain lineage. He had a certain story with him. There was, there was this grace that came with them to know God. You understand? That same grace that will cause your children to know God even if they don't want to. Say amen. amen. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Then the story goes fast forward to the prophets. Granted. Malachi. Granted. Zephaniah. Granted. Uh, minor prophets. Nahum. Granted. All of them. Joel. Granted. You understand? Come to the New Testament dispensation. And the beginning of the New Testament now gives us a church that was so religious that God was no longer in church, but the systems continued and his grace abounded. You understand? There were Levites, okay? There were priests, there were temples, there were sanctuaries, there were Sanhedrin councils, there were prisoners, you understand? There were low proceed men, there were men who were considered unclean, there were men who were considered clean by the high priest. The system was there. There was an offering for a high priest to go there every year for the sake of the people. Listen, God has never intended to do sin business with majority. Try to understand. Even in the Old Testament mind, he gets one high priest. He says, ah, don't all talk. One guy can represent. Listen, God doesn't think like you. Hallelujah. God is not democracy. God is Zion. It is not the government of the people by the people for the people. No, it is the government of God for God by God. It, for all are in him, for him, through him, and all things are for him. For all in him, all things consist. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? That is why the most democratic nations of this world are the most... I will not say it. I will not what? Say it. Hallelujah. So, we get to a point where now we're, 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 we meet the New Testament. And at that point, the church had services, the church had prayer meetings, 
the, the temples were in line. They were in order. You understand? Why? Because the temples were built. There was a time where the temple wasn't. But men still knew God. The Zerubbabel's knew God. The Ezra's knew God. They, they knew. They somehow were born in a situation and condition that somehow knew God. They, they could have refused to just believe. But even the people, they're just there. But they, they know. You understand? Guy can refuse to get born again. But if you say, let me pay you to preach salvation, he can, he can surprise you. I have a friend of mine, he had a brother who ran mine. And the guy started quoting Genesis. He explained mysteries in Genesis. You understand? Why Adam was not clothed. And the man was mad. But he was explaining why Adam was not clothed. You understand what I'm saying? They just, they know. They know. They somehow know. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus, New Testament dispensation comes in. Okay? And then you start to realize that what was called church, anything called church, was against Jesus. Have you noticed that? Do you realize God never picked men from the temple? Jesus never picked men from the temple. He went to fishermen, unlearned men. The scripture says in the book of Acts, these are unlearned. They were unlearned. They, he, he, he skipped the whole church system. That was obvious enough to tell you. There was nothing that he needed in church. That's why the Bible says, let us now go without the camp and do what? Bear reproach. Because there is a place where the camp today has gotten a a certain wiring in Christianity that men can come for a meeting and it looks like a political meeting. It looks like a presentation on, 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 on animal drugs or a health program or a certain implement, thing to be implemented in 2016 by the government. There should be a difference between men who are gathered in the name of Jesus Christ and a malaria consortium program. You understand? Some of you, you're working. You understand what I'm trying to tell you here. We have gone for training and you just sit and then eat and then people are just listening. People are talking. You see, then presentation. Then the first presenter stands up. You understand? And then after that, you're feeling a bit sleepy. So they get what? They get you some energizers. They make you stand up. They say you get the ball. You put it here. You know what you think? You prepare the... You know what you Then people stop dreaming and then they wake up a bit. Then they sit down. You understand? And some ones are like some of our presidents addressing Congress. Per capita income, 35%. Then next year, we drilled it to 65 Then our GDP, our PDG, our GDB, BGD, JDB, Baba, JDB, JDB. And then you start to see dignitaries sleeping. You understand? Why? Because some of them are old. And, and listen, some churches are like that. One time I attended the service, the man spent the whole hour speaking politics. I am thinking, I'm thinking. I asked people one day, did you ever hear Jesus criticized a Roman ruler. That was not his business. Opposition. Opposing what? He says, pray for your leaders. For all leadership is from God. All of it. Anybody that is in a place of leadership is from God. Well, how about if we see injustice? We know how to fix injustice. Our weapons are not carnal. They are mighty in Christ. For the pulling down of strongholds. You're fighting flesh and blood. We don't wage war with flesh and blood. We wage war with principalities, powers, dominions. Listen, when you look at our nation, do you really think by arresting three men and then overhauling the government, you can fix Uganda? This thing is not only in government. It is everywhere. It is on your police officer. It is in that woman in the bar. It is in that guy at the restaurant. It is with that guy at the petrol station. It is with that mechanic who fixes your, 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 your tube. It is with that guy who shows your bag when it is stone. It is so in. 
It is so inside. So I'm telling you, this thing is, a man can wake up and say, I'm going to give you this much that I do this so that you act like you didn't. That is not government. That is individuals. Then we have people who, who's, who have been pushed to do certain things because the system is too heavy for them not to respond to it. A student goes to Makerere and asks for his transcript and they refuse to give it to him and they know why it is. And the man tells him, you'll get a wound. Why? He's telling him, give me some and I'll get you a transcript. A student fails the paper and a lecturer tells her, give me A, I'll give you B. This is bigger than, you understand what I'm trying to tell you. The day I was reading in the newspapers of how a man stole three quarters of our annual budget. How? how? Listen, you, you stole, you, you, not you, but you steal three quarters of our annual budget. That is the devil. It's not, it's not the man. It's not the man. Try to understand. We can't sort those ones by la 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 la. No, no, no. No. That's why I, I, I'm, I'm going to say a very radical statement and I'm not going to re, uh, repent for it. For all this corruption and funny things you see in our nation, there's only one person to blame, the church. Not those guys. Us. Because they are the biggest church attendants. They sit in front of the pews. They give speeches in church. Come on, somebody. Where is that anointing that started our nation, our fathers back in the day, when the Bazookfus had just come, and a man gets filled with the Holy Ghost, he brings back the wheelbarrows he stole. That repentance in Zacchaeus. He says, if I got the man, come, I'll give you twice. If I can't preach a gospel to a man to take back the shoe he stole, I have no moral authority to actually pray and judge him for what he's doing. Because we never saw them, Jesus. We never... Listen, you can't preach God to a point where the presence of, on a man is too intense that even when he's stretching forth his hands, the eye of God is so clear. He can even feel light. <laughs> So who's to blame? Let us take this whole blame. Why? Because we raised those men. Look at all of those men and look at their roots. They had Christian roots. Somebody didn't do the right thing. The Bible says, train up a child in the way that they should go. If they grow, God said, they will not depart. By the time a child departs, somebody didn't do that. There is somebody who didn't do their job. And quite honestly, it is their church. Because if revival ought to be started, it starts in the church. Read the American president. Some of you will understand. You will appreciate why America is still up there. Even with every weaknesses, they are still up there. Why? Because the founding fathers were men of faith. I read stories of the presidents of America gathering the Congress to fast for one week so God would give them a direction of path to invest in something. United States of America. Ronald Reagan's most immediate advisor, Bill Graham. Th those were the men who spoke to them. Those were the men who spoke to the president. I understand one time an American president refused to go to war because a man of God told him don't go for war. Which president in Africa can listen to a man of God? Which prime minister can listen to a man of God? That means these are men we raise who cannot account even their lives. Why? Because they feel they're even above anything. And until God gives a man an anointing, are you hearing me? Where he can just wake up one day and judge something and it takes place. Listen, the problem is with us. Why? Because there was a time where the church was, was relevant and it got to a point where it stopped being relevant. And the quicker the church wakes up to understand that we must be relevant, the quicker we wake up the better. This whole thing of strengthening feeble knees as someone who are preaching to individuals, yet we men of God must preach them to ourselves. I'm telling you, do you know that we preach too much to the congregation than ourselves? 
Do you know that? Me, I understood that day that it cannot be these guys doing this thing under the presence of Almighty God. And nothing can be done by a Christian. There must be something wrong. And some are Christian. That is why. Now I can't again go inside and speak like we don't own it. We own it. Listen, child of God. We own it. We can't raise another Christian fool to get on our parliament and become funny. We can't. Oh, well, you understand where we're coming from? Because I know we're living in a time where now we're redefining. That's why I told God. Huh? Me, I told God. There is no way we can't pastor the next leaders of our nation. Even God said, you're right. <laughs> Even if you don't clap. Even if you refuse. Then just somebody came and cried. He said, stop. I've stopped. He said, stop what? I've stopped. I've stopped. Chucked him. Why have you chucked him? I'm, I don't know. I chucked him. Why? It's like, like he wasn't taking me somewhere. I wanted to hug her, but I acted like, oh, sorry. <laughs> By the time she chucked him for God, are you hearing me? She can't take KCCM money. She could not have chucked James. And then you put her in Ministry of Finance and she stole money. Nara. Why? Because they've gotten to a point where they've counted loss to the excellence of the knowledge of Christ. They have. They have. Listen. The world has gotten to a point of being too crazy. You understand? That even the Christianity, what we call if you sit down with an average Christian, you can weep. 